What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode number two of our series titled The Ones. Today we're going to be hopping on to the Southwest Airlines flight number one, which this one is meant for historical celebration for the airline. Now for those of you familiar with Southwest Airlines, you may know that they started as just an interstate airline within the state of Texas. And so Dallas, Houston, and Corpus Christi being their three biggest cities. The airline actually still celebrates that route by titling it flight number one. I'm here bright and early before the sun at Dallas Love Field here in Dallas, Texas. Now Southwest actually uses the smaller airports in both Dallas and Houston. So instead of Dallas Fort Worth Airport, we're at Dallas Love Airport, which is mostly Southwest. It's grown a little bit as well as Houston Hobby Airport instead of Houston Intercontinental Airport, uh, but still mostly Southwest and it's what they use for their main hubs here in Texas. So we're going to head inside to check in here at Dallas Love Field and check in for what Southwest Airlines calls a through flight. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with what a through flight is, it means that the flight number actually is going to continue all the way from Dallas to Corpus Christi. However, it does involve a stop at Houston along the way. Now, passengers can book the legs from Dallas to Houston as well as Houston to Corpus Christi independently. But what I've done today to celebrate the entirety of flight number one is we're going to fly all the way from Dallas to Corpus Christi with a stop in Houston so you guys can see just how Southwest operates these through flights. Now one last check-in base note for those of you that like to travel heavy, just know that Southwest does allow two free check bags. That's right, two free check bags, which is unheard of with airlines nowadays. Now you can see the departure board here. One thing I do like is it actually shows you not only which direction the gate is, but just how long it's gonna take for you to get there, as well as how long you have until boarding starts or ends if boarding's already begun. Now through security, you can see the terminal here at Dallas Love Field. It's got a much newer and much more comfortable feel in Dallas Fort Worth, just as being a smaller airport that tends to happen. It does still have a lot of great options as far as food and stuff goes to keep you busy while you wait for your flight, as well as pretty much every window having great views of the ramp and runway areas. Now trying to find my flight on the departure board was a little bit harder because I didn't know whether to look for Houston Hobby or Corpus Christi. Now they must have thought of that because they did actually have it under both. And then as you walk down the wings of the terminal, they have two main wings and at the beginning it actually has all the gates, all the flights at those gates and their flight status so that you can keep tabs on your flight while hanging out in the main restaurant area. Gate number 10 is going to be ours today. You can see they actually do a pretty good job at signage to make sure that you're at the right gate. They put the screens so that you can see your city, you can see the flight status, you can see everything about the flight before you even worry about or going up to the gate agents. Another thing that's kind of nice is it does show you how full your flight's going to be, which is super important for Southwest boarding style, which I want to take a second to talk about. You can see here, I don't have a seat on my boarding pass. Instead, I have a boarding group and position, in this case, A56. So Southwest has an open seating flight plan where you are assigned a number in order of how early you check in, and then you can select your boarding seat based on whatever's open. So you can see here, they have all the numbers you can line up. They line, they'll line up all the A passengers, get them on board, and then B, and then C, one through 60. So you get on board, you take whatever seats you can, but there is no assigned seats. So some people prefer this method, some people get a little more stressed out by it, but that is how Southwest does things here. Now, speaking of boarding, we're actually going to line up here now ready for boarding for our flight in the second half of the A group. 
an A56 and we're going to get ready to hop on board and see what seats are available for us. Now the nice thing about the flight being just over half full is that there's going to be empty seats and so I actually went a little bit further towards the back of the aircraft with hopes that I might at least have an empty middle seat between me and another passenger. Now Southwest, just like most airlines now, puts a menu in their seat back pocket so you can see what kind of drinks and snacks are available on this flight. Now I'll go over the coverage of that a little bit later while we're in the flight, but you do get a free drink and a free snack on board the flight, usually pretzels or peanuts to go along with the drink. In addition to those, we actually also have onboard Wi-Fi on Southwest Airlines. It gives you some instructions on how to connect here. And through that Wi-Fi, you can get seatback entertainment to your personal device. My only warning to you is that there's actually no charging ports on board. So if it's a longer flight, bring some sort of backup battery or expect for your phone or laptop to die along the way.
Now, as far as the snack and beverage service goes on Southwest Airlines, they actually don't come up and down the aisle with the drink carts, what's a little bit different here at Southwest. Instead, the flight attendants will come around to take everybody's order, and then they'll come by a little bit later with these trays full of the food and drinks to give to each and every passenger. So customer service wise, it's awesome, but it does take a little bit longer to get everyone their beverages. This morning, I went with a snack mix, which every passenger was offered, and a cup of Southwest Airlines coffee. Now Texas is known for its pretty big storms, you can see out in the distance some of the building thunderstorms and we were expecting those to roll in at some point today but for now at least we had some nice clear visibility going into the Houston area. Now that we're pulling into the gate and stopped here a moment to talk to you guys about how Southwest through flights work. Unlike some airlines, you actually aren't forced to deplane and then rescan the boarding pass to get on. Instead, everyone that's terminating this flight number in Houston, whether connecting to another flight or just ending their travels here, gets off the airplane and we're just going to stay seated for a little while. Once those passengers are off, however, they do allow us the opportunity to change seats. I took this opportunity not to go to the bulkhead, but I went to row two and got a nice row two window seat for leg number two of our journey, which the captain promised to be nice and turbulent. 
It is kind of fun to feel like you have this airplane to yourself plus a few other passengers while you wait for them to clean what's left of the airplane and get the other flight ready for boarding. But not after too much time, they did call out that the continuing passengers were ready to board and they wanted everyone to take their seats that they wanted to be reserved. Now the flight to Corpus Christi was a little bit too turbulent for them to actually have a drink service so we didn't get that but instead I took this as a great opportunity to show you guys a little bit of the in-flight entertainment system on your personal device. So like I mentioned you can connect to the Wi-Fi for $8 or you can use free texting through that same Wi-Fi service. In addition to that you can watch free movies, free TV shows, as well as free live TV on just on your personal device. Now like I mentioned before there is no charging port so expect it to die unless you have some sort of external battery or some sort of way to charge your device. Now Corpus Christi, Texas is a little bit further south and it's also closer to the shore and so those storms that I was talking about have reached Corpus Christi a little bit sooner. It looks like we should be able to get into Corpus Christi just fine but with plenty of turbulence and plenty of weather along the way.
crew would like to welcome to Corpus Christi. For your continued safe finish, remain in your seat, take off the pads and luggage stone until the captain spot the plane to complete stop at the gate. Now Corpus Christi, Texas, not a big airport by any means, Southwest definitely being their biggest customer. So it made it easy to get off the airplane, right out of security, and out to the curb. <laughs> 